Here's one of those motion detector units, the little thing that sits on the wall and blinks its light at you if you walk by. I think the battery fell out. Screws are sharp. So my understanding is that this pops open. There was a slot somewhere. Here's a slot up here, so all I need is a screwdriver, which this room doesn't have. Progress, a screwdriver. I keep doing this. Oh, it's so sharp. Mm. Making a mess of my beautiful desk. Ooh, those are different. Hey, there's nobody to take the screws out. Oh. Where's the circuit board? The heck are these? Yeah, they're little lithium cells. Well, these are new to me. I mean, I'm sure I've seen them, but didn't know the device like this would use these. So the front has this magic, let's see, is it just a raw? Yeah, it's just a raw window. So this is actually the optical assembly that has all the weird cutout patterns that allows the sensor to detect the motion. And then this is just sort of a, a light pipe that diffuses the light, since we can see it's cut a little bit. I don't know, I, I wouldn't say, I don't know if you'd say appear brighter, but it appear larger. And here's the actual device, so... All we have to do is take out this screw in the center, and the board will fall out if I don't cut myself on the screw. Ah uh, yes, here's how you grip something with pointy screws like this. Hold it firmly with the sharp points to where they can't cut your hand. Ah, uh, I wonder if these have to be precisely calibrated in the jig or not. This is awful screws. Hmm. Based, by the f based on the fact that they're using through-hole stuff, I wonder if this is a fairly old unit. First, then I flip it over and get the uh, amazing surface mount view. So many parts for what seems like such a simple thing. Switch. Uh, my dumb mind wants to say that it was made in the 28th week of 2002, but maybe I'm just reading into that wrong. All right. So, one thing that gets me right away that's not circuit related is that it has this little chart here next to where you can adjust the screw. That one of these marks must be telling you where to adjust it for the angle, and I can only assume that that has to do with whether you're placing it very high on the wall or very, uh, you know, very high on the wall and what angle you want it seeing, but I don't really know. So here's our light that uh, flashes when we have motion. And really, it's just a heavily complicated thing to do two things. So first off, it has to support little motion detector thing. And secondly, it has to send out a signal to your security unit for several things, motion, uh, or maybe intensity motion, as well as maybe if the batteries are dying, uh, to let you know. So we have a flip switch here that lets you go between normal operation mode and test mode. I don't know what test mode would do. It probably just, you could uh, maybe fake arm your alarm and it would tell you if it's detecting motion or something, or you can test it locally. I don't know if what the difference between test mode is because it still flashes if it sees motion either way and you wouldn't have to arm your alarm system for that. So we have this can, which is a N5970 with a T on it. It's probably just the package version. So it is a surface acoustic wave resonator uh, in a TO39 metal can package here. These typically operate at 345 megahertz. I don't really have a way of testing that. And that's uh, so complicated, all this stuff on the back. I'm not gonna make a uh, diagram of all this. Not that I could, I'd have to guesstimate most of these parts anyway. And then we've got this chip here, which I would assume is the radio part. This would probably be controlling the little infrared module. So this is probably what the wireless transmitter of the brains, but let's find out. All right, I'm awful and can't find anything on that part. So let's go ahead and search this one down here. So it's an STLM346N. Yeah, so that's just a uh, quad bipolar op amp. Yeah, there's just nothing really else to it. So it's just a uh, op amp. Take the foam off. Make sure you don't touch the sensor if you want this to work again. Crazy amount of filtering right off the sensor. And then it just gets lost into all the wireless transmitter magic that this has. I see. Pitway made this. Uh, Entire board and module. Oh, is this the antenna down here? I don't know. It's certainly something. 
RF is magic. So here's some sort of little lines with two dots. On the other side we can't really tell anything because of the battery. You would think there would be obvious vias near it. They have heavy via stitching on the ground plane. So let's search for this part without pitway. Maybe they rebadged an obvious part number I could find. No, I still can't find anything too specific on that part. So maybe it's a uh, very customized chip for this exact application. So yeah, that's a very brief look at one of these wall motion detectors. Uh, I definitely would like to try getting a much, much newer one and seeing how much they've simplified them because this seems like an awful lot of discrete work just for detecting motion and then broadcasting to a control unit. I found motion. So yeah, I don't know when these started becoming this form factor or available. Definitely very early design. Probably nowadays I would bet that they have the standard driver chip for the sensor and then they have just like a single microchip brain that just does everything inside. It, I can't imagine them still making this. I also wish I knew how much these cost normally. All right, I gotta take these screws out before I kill myself here. Ah, so these are marked as pet immune up to 40 pounds, up to a 40 pound dog. Uh, having a 50 pound dog, that makes this extremely useless model. Obviously they are discontinued, but we can use the magic of the internet to tell us how much these used to cost on Amazon. Assuming they sold them. Yeah, they didn't sell them recently enough for me to have easy data for them. Third party sells them, let's say on average $50. That's fairly interesting. Oh look, I think we can get a data sheet on it. Oh, what do you know? So we can get a data sheet on it and know that it's got split zone optic technology, whatever that is. Uh, five year battery life, that's pretty impressive. Um, I mean, it pets up to 40 pounds, but again, that's weird. So it's using several zones in a pattern to see if there's motion within several different patterns. Ah, okay, so if you were to attempt to take the, uh, the cover off, this is the trip switch, and that would set off the alarm. Yep, okay, so if your system's armed, uh, this will, it's not to tell the air maintenancing it. If you were to take off the cover, this would trip the alarm, so you uh, really can't bypass this motion detector without killing the alarm or simply being smaller than a 40 pound dog. So it can detect motion from 0.15 to 3 meters per second. So what, if you can move faster than 3 meters per second, you can actually bypass this thing setting off? Wow, there you go. I'm gonna guess on the pulse count. It, it says you can disable the uh, red LED with jumpers, so one of these two will disable that LED. So what? That way you couldn't, uh, you wouldn't know you're being sensed and set off the alarm. I don't know, interesting. I don't know what else to say or do with it. It's too way too complicated to try to reverse engineer. It's not really usable enough on its own to pick one of these up, I guess. What would be hilarious, the cheapest way is if you don't have a system that would be activated by it, you could remove the LED and use that as a trigger uh, for your own personal device so that we wouldn't have to be trying to figure out how to pick up the wireless signal from it or have a compatible system. Just shear that LED off and use that as a trigger because I don't know if it stays on or if it blinks during motion, but you would be able to use it for some sort of nefarious activity. Just wondering, are these cells dead? Uh, well, 2.1 volts is probably pretty dead for a 3 volt lithium. It's so dead it won't read. 2.24? Hey, this battery's from 2008. Or it expires in 2008. Ooh, that's worse to think. Let's check the discharge curve on this and see how dead it is. I don't see a power rating on the, uh, the unit, but it looks like these specific cells what are nominal 2.5 volts and they're considered dead. Well, well below two, so these might actually still work a little bit. Hard to say. Yeah, all the tests tend to fall off when they get past. So yeah, they should have a very flat curve and then drop off dramatically under 2.5 after their given lifetime. So these might still be almost alive. Here, let's see what happens if we Try to power it on test mode. Drop the jumper. It lights on hot fire in my hand and shocks me to death. Oh, there's no. Oh, it did blink. Mind you, it doesn't have an optical assembly. Oh, 
I don't know how well I can detect motion with uh it blinks. Does it blink often? Let's not move. Well, what do you know? Even without an optical assembly, it seems to work. I think it's detect yeah, it detects me moving my head behind the camera. So I'm still moving. Oh, no, maybe not. I don't know, interesting. So yeah, what do you know? Those batteries are technically not flat. So yeah, I guess you could reuse this as some sort of sensor. Maybe I'll make a hack on that later. Again, you would want it back in its, again, you'd want it back in its holder. So that way it, uh, you know, can detect motion in its actual areas at once.